Hello, friends, and welcome to our Sunday streaming services. If you're with us on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to get notifications when we have new videos. If you're with us on Zoom, drop a hi in the chat. We'd love to say hello back. If you're with us in the sanctuary, hello, everyone. I cannot wait to see you again. And if this is your first time here, go ahead and sign our guest book at oakleafuu.org slash guest. Also, happy April. Fun times, right? All right. Today's sermon is Finding Balance. Creation must guide our critique with Paul Fugile. All right. First of all, a big thank you to, let's get this list, Kenneth, Jocelyn, Kathy, Scott, Kirsten, and Alicia for just doing tons of extra work this past week on the church, um, like fixing up the minister's office. Scott, show us a picture. Oh, it looks so good. Our new minister is going to love it. More on that in the e-blast later. All right, if you are a committee who wants some money in the upcoming fiscal year, now is the time to ask for it. The board will be meeting today to discuss the new budget for next year. So if you need a part of that, then go ahead and submit it as soon as possible. Board-relay at oaklifuu.org. Show up to the board meeting, link is in the e-blast, three o'clock today. Speaking of the e-blast, what else is going on in our church? We have updates on hiring a minister. We have updates on Easter. Are we going to have a little something? We have a little something. Uh, the feral kitties. Mm, love news on the kitties. Workday Wednesdays. That is every Wednesday, 5 to 7 p.m. So join that. It is a beautiful time of the year to be joining that. Dumpster drama. What? What does that even mean? It's in the e-blast. <laughs> a message from LDC, the Leadership Development Committee. And, of course, widening the circle of concern. Remember, they are meeting on Tuesdays now if you would like to join. It is Sunday, so if you can stick around at 11.15 for a talk back, you always get something out of it. Whether you come to talk or come to listen, it's always great. Also, Adult Religious Exploration with Sarah is at 1 o'clock. They are doing science fiction and religion and philosophy. All right, y'all. It's that time, member anniversary. So everybody give a happy UUCOC anniversary <laughs> anniversary to Claudia Clip. Happy anniversary, Claudia, to you and to everyone else out there. I hope that you have a very happy Sunday. Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Oak Cliff. Thank you for having the curiosity and courage to join us. We welcome you, whoever you are, whatever spiritual tradition, gender, age, race, sexual orientation, or background you may bring to our community. We hope you will find here comfort, connection, challenge, respect, and above all, love. May the light we now kindle inspire us to use our powers to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to bless and not to curse, to serve you, spirit of love, compassion, and forgiveness. Que esta luz que ahora encendemos nos inspire a usar nuestros dones y poderes para sanar y no para herir para ayudar y no para impedir, para bendecir y no para maldecir, para servirte a ti, espíritu de amor, compasión y perdón. A Renewed Hope for This World by Nathan Ryan Be it real or metaphor, whatever is in your backpack or your briefcase or your purse that you've brought into this sanctuary that is weighing you down, leave it behind. Whatever you are carrying that is keeping you distracted or caught up in shame or guilt or hopelessness, leave it behind. If you need it, it will be there when we're done. But for this hour, just let it go. Come into this place with open hearts. Come into this place with the soul that has remembered how to be tender again. 
come into this place with a renewed hope for this world. Come into this place ready to build a world we've always been worthy of and have always dreamed of. Join me in affirming our covenant to one another. Because we love one another, we honor each individual's spiritual journey. We celebrate life's abundance and service to each other, our community, and the world. We connect with each other in love, respect, and acceptance. Thus do we covenant together. And now in Spanish. Porque nos hermanos, uno al otro, Honramos el viaje espiritual de cada individuo. Celebramos la abundancia de la vida en el servicio a entre sí, nuestra comunidad y el mundo. Ponemos en contacto a unos con otros en el amor, respeto y excepción, así que hacemos pacto. In our community, we make time each week to share pieces of our lives with one another, our joys and sorrows. We do this because each person in this community has value. Each person's experience matters. We share our sorrow with one another today, knowing that sorrow comes into each person's life, knowing that together we offer comfort. Please share your sorrows publicly by posting them in the Zoom chat, or send them to our Facebook Messenger, or speak them aloud. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace when I breathe out. 
I breathe out love when I breathe in. I breathe in peace when I breathe out. I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. We also share our joys with one another, knowing that joy comes into all of our lives, knowing that joy calls unto joy, knowing that together our voices can rise in a chorus of celebration. Please share your joys publicly by posting them to the Zoom chat or send them to our Facebook Messenger or speak them aloud. Spirit of life, come unto me, sing in my heart all the stirs of compassion, blow in the wind, rise in the sea, move in the hand, giving life the shape of justice. Roots hold me close, we set me free. Spirit of life, come to me, come to me. Welcome all. Today we're going to start with a short story. I invite you into the world of Resi and the adventures of wormhole travel. It is the year 3048 where we meet Resi, a boy, or maybe he's a man now, or perhaps he's neither. Resi is a traveler of universes, the Dharma bum of wormholes, if you will. He is a shapeshifter, a chameleon of sorts, although he's not a lizard. But you will find him slipping in and out of wormholes that span the distance of miles, kilometers, and light years, far apart. Rezi was born of more than a mother and a father, but born of the stars that shine beyond the night. He got his name from Mars, or was he merely on Mars? That's where he spent most of his youth. Ah, youth. What is youth? What is time? Some 500 years ago, about 525 years after your reading this, time became impossible to keep. It was then on the green rock planet, green for the trees, rock for dents, and planet because despite the dozen or so more discovered planets that came after, what you call Earth wanted to make it clear that it was not going to be the next Pluto. I'm not sure why not. Pluto has a luxurious atmosphere for Plutonians to ski in the winter. Now, as I was saying, it was then, the year was 2548, 
wormholes were discovered. With the assistance of an enormous magnet to generate energy and Einstein's theory of relativity, the fabric of space-time became the greatest transportation system, not just across your galaxy, but across all the universes. Yes, universe, plural. Wormholes opened up a whole lot of doors the human species didn't even know existed. Now, I know, I know, at this point, you have a lot of questions. Well, some of them we won't get to, but to help set the stage, I'll answer a few. Did the human, experience, human species experience evolution? Yes, and revolution. Uh, did the human species destroy the planet? No, hence the revolution. Did the human species colonize Mars? Some of it did. Has the human species destroyed any other planet? No, it's far too slow and way outnumbered. But we'll get to that. Rezi is about to drop into a peninsula of the Crab Nebula. Colby, I just love the Crab Nebula. There's so much energy here. The colors are wild, and there's a wormhole at every turn. It's like the New York City of the Milky Way. Your narrator here, I'll pop in from time to time to explain the not so obvious. Colby, looks and acts much like a dog, but he has a highly evolved biological system that allows the respiration of multiple types of gases. This type of evolution became possible as different species on Earth began to breed with the rest of the species in places like Mars, and they developed mutations that allowed them to breathe other gases. And just so you know, the rest of the conversation takes place in Nebulean, Nebulean. But it will be translated for you for your reading pleasure into English. Hello and welcome to the Crab Nebula. What is the purpose of your visit today? I hear you have some amazing raids here on the Crab Nebula. So it's a pleasure. How long do you intend to stay? The visitor's form auto populates next to her head. Until the wind carries us away, Reggie gestures to Colby in a sweeping motion. Colby. Rolls his eyes. There is no wind here, but plenty of light waves. Do enjoy your stay. They gesture to proceed beyond the electromagnetic gate. What shall we do first, Colby? Resi looks down as Colby runs circle. Excuse me, sir. Did you know that the nebula is advancing to a black hole much faster than expected due to the capturing of UV, UV rays by other planetary systems. Well, I'm hardly a sir, but you can call me Resi. I did not know that. Why are they taking your UV rays? Sir, I mean Resi, where are you from? She moved close in like she was a friend. Resi took a step back. Well, that's up for some debate. Mars, Earth, the stars. Ah, oh, yes, the stars. Well, the Crab Nebula used to be a star, so you'll understand having our resources exploited is a tragedy. I apologize. I didn't get your name. I am Tori. Do you see what I'm saying, Resi, about 
the exploitation of our resources. I am sure you have quite the case, but I'm really unfamiliar with the details. I will transmit the information to you. She prepares the sink with Rosie. Rosie again takes a step back and says, no, no, thank you. If you have something external, I'll take it with me. But really, I must be going. Colby turns in the opposite direction. He knows what's up. Here you are. It has our contact info. Save the rays. Contact us anytime. Rezzy takes the external download and heads to the closest bench around the corner out of eyesight. Colby lays down next to him. You know, Colby, I don't quite get it. Black holes are marvelous systems. I've heard stories from long ago that many thought you would disintegrate or be destroyed into a million pieces if you were to enter one. But all I've heard is that they're greater than wormholes and will take you to the outer limits of the universes if you are ready. Also, did you know that they are infinitely bigger than a supernova? Could you imagine your home expanding exponentially to an infinite capacity? Granted, Black holes are not nearly as beautiful as supernova, at least from the outside. But can you imagine the edge of everything there ever was and the edge of everything there ever will be? Can you imagine what that would look like? He looks down. Colby, can you imagine? Colby snores. Good morning, all. Thank you for listening to my brief short story and your willingness to engage in the message in this new way. I wanted to share some thoughts with you on how this came about by answering the question, why have I chosen this method for the message? Pretty obvious. The title for today's message is and was Finding Balance, Creation Must Guide Our Critique. As you can see from the story, fiction writing is not my most well-versed writing job. Really, though, I needed a cathartic moment. Not simply escapism, which is often the source of sci-fi, but a, a thought experiment that could encompass everything not going to shit. Sorry, kids. You know, I have a decade plus of dystopian stories and novels that have invaded every edge of the media and pop culture from the hunger games to the zombie apocalypse to now a literal pandemic. I've had enough of the selling of tragedy. It's like the Eagles, or was it just Don Henley that sang dirty laundry? An even larger motivator to this method to my message is this sort of gnawing feeling, this vision that can't be escaped. It can't be unseen, it, and it does not occur without eliciting this gnawing sort of ache that all around me there are these multitude of times and in turn these multitude of worlds. Some of these times are in the past, but not just in the past, they are the past but they're indicative of historical periods and yet they're all together present in the very moment and very active. Some of these times are very present, but what can really be said about the present when both the past and the future 
coexist. It's a spiral staircase of sorts. The future. I can see those times as well. They're broad and large and very appealing. Sure, you scoff because, like me, you've been inundated with the promotion of humanity's failures for the sake of profit across at least the last 200 years. But it's not the profit that's the problem. It's that when offered an alternative, the masses of society are unresponsive. Our neurological networks are trained, conditioned to seek out the adrenaline rush of tragedy. And that needs to change. It's like everyone slowing down the stair in an accident on the highway. We just need to move on from this moment and those moments. So I, I have to tell you, there's another way that, and, and this is the finding the balance. The potential that we are capable of at this point is beyond what we can imagine. Like wormhole jumping or standing at the edge of universes. And let me tell you, it's not the sole faith in the scientific process that gets us to those places. Limits and control are not what led Einstein's theory of relativity, but it was the imagining the depth and the beauty of God's capacity for creation. Which brings me to my last point. I could have parsed out history, analyzed the forces of society, spoke of cause and effects and the value of creation with, but over, critique, and surely many of you would have enjoyed it. Yet, to be completely honest, my critical voice is strong. It, there's not a whole lot. Once it gets momentum, it's, I have to be very diligent. I can analyze just about anything down to the minutia of the matter. But I usually get stuck there. Like I said, that momentum is strong. And stuckness doesn't jive well with imagination, with beauty, and with potential. So critique, stuckness, no beauty, no potential, no imagination. The tragedy narrative is reinforced in that system. It's like a bad habit or an addiction. It's only a matter of time before my voice and the voice of the media become succinct. Only mine has nearly 2,000 years of historical evidence to reinforce it. So what happens when we imagine a world, while well, it's beyond our comprehension, what happens when we imagine a world that's unbounded, beautiful, no, marvelous? And let's not just imagine it, let's act it out. Everything in me wants to see, not an awakening, not a reckoning, nor revenge, but renaissance. I want to see renaissance arise from the recent tragedies that are the dominoes falling from being pushed a hundred years ago. Everything in me wants renaissance. The older I grow, the more and more I understand that art may be the only one true form of justice. So stop asking why, how. Oh my God, what happened? Where did we go wrong? And pick up a paintbrush. The pen is mightier than the sword. Write, write, and write some more. If you're really good at something, you too better.
path out of that. You might not be perfect at it at first, but you might get 100 so likes just because you're funny. YouTube the crap out of that. But don't do it for the likes. And don't do it for the followers. Do it because your life depends on it. Because it does. New worlds are predicated on visionaries stepping out in passion and staking a claim for what is possible. Write, paint, carve, dance. Show the world what you're made of. Be a seed, a stroke, a footstep, and not a force that's set upon changing the world, but lays the foundation for a better world to grow from. That's possible. To arise from the ash of tragedy, newly unbound by all that the world has placed upon our shoulders to create what was thought not possible. This is justice. With that, I'll leave you with two quotes. The secret of change is to focus all your energy not on fighting the old, but on building up the new. Socrates. Without music, life would be a mistake. Frederick Nietzsche. dance with you May I have this dance with you Through the good times and the bad times too Let it be a dance Let a dancing song be heard Play the music Say the words And fill the sky with sand offering to sustain and strengthen this place, which is sacred to so many of us, a community of memory and hope, for we are now the keepers of the dream. To make an offering or your pledge, please go to oakcliffuu.org forward slash donate and follow the links. you I 
receive to you I give together we share and from this we live de ti o recibo a ti te doy así compartimos y vivimos hoy From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. De ti yo recibo, a ti te doy, así compartimos y vivimos hoy. Our connection to each other and this community remains by Kathy A. Huff. Our time in this place may have ended, but our connection to each other and this community remains. Together, we may walk the path of justice, speak words of love, live the selfless deed, trod gently upon the earth and fill the world with compassion. Until we meet again, blessed be. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now in Spanish, encendimos esta llama, pero no la luz de la verdad el calor de comunidad o el fuego de nuestro compromiso. Estos los llevamos en el corazón hasta que estemos juntos otra vez. Can I keep?